the psalmist in his beautiful teachings says, Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. For you've established the earth, and it will endure. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bow now before you, Lord, in the humbleness of heart. And I thank you for the words that Jesus gave unto his disciples that very first day when he arose from the tomb, Lord. He says, peace be unto you. May we now, our Father, receive it from the very depths of your love and to the very core of the chapel of our souls. And may we rejoice this morning, Lord, because Jesus the Christ has arose. May we now in this place worship your son Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And what a privilege it is to just to come before our Heavenly Father in, in prayer and in song. Do we have announcements before we go into our... Yes, Sister. Um, I have several, so... First of all, the Nurture Commission would like to thank everyone for your donations to the food pantry. We will be delivering them this week. Well, I really think Pat is going to be delivering them, but this week. We are also decorating next Sunday for Christmas. For the Christmas season, Advent begins the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and we will be decorating after Sunday school. So if you would like to help, please feel free to join us after Sunday school. Finally, please remember our Thanksgiving challenge. Uh, the Nurture Commission challenged everyone to send a note of support or thank you to someone who has a positive effect on you. Okay. Thanks, Dan. I see another hand back there. Yeah, Sister Pat. Uh, last reminder, two boxes will do next Sunday. Okay. Beth. I have a card. It says, my dear, Chris, my dear church family, oh, how I have missed you. Our time of unity is worship, singing the hymns, hearing the word, and fellowship. In Sunday school, as we studied the word, sharing in one another's burdens and prayer concerns. Thank you for the many cards and well wishes. Keeping nearby as reading them encouraged me on this journey. I love each of you dearly as I love my family, taking such good care of me. So many blessings. God is good and, and a great God. I love each of you dearly. Missing you, your sister in Christ, Jane. Thanks. It's nice to have Julie back this morning. And, uh, Julie is uh, recovering from surgery, so uh, that is uh, just a blessing. But let us stand as we, Julie has uh, graciously agreed to play the two hymns for us uh, this morning. So probably most of you know the story of, of this, this particular hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, how it was penned uh, by a gentleman who lost his wife and I believe two daughters, if I ain't mistaken, uh, in a shipwreck, and then he went back sometimes later, and the, uh, the captain of the ship said, this is the place uh, where, you, where their ship went down, and then he, he pinned these words. Uh, he didn't say he wasn't troubled. He didn't say he didn't hurt. He just simply said, it is well. What a difference that makes. Christ knows what, when we're hurting within, but he also knows that uh, the scripture lesson is Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let us stand together and do likewise. It is well. Sister Julie, bring us in. <laughs>
Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. It's getting closer to Thanksgiving. Uh, this week, I'm just reading a few thoughts that hopefully will make you remember your blessings. Um, it says, I am thankful for the mess to clean up after a party because it means I am surrounded by friends. The taxes I pay because it means I'm employed. The clothes that fit a little too snug because it means I have enough to eat. A lawn that needs mowing, windows that need cleaning, gutters that need fixing because it means I have a home. My shadow who watches me work because it means I'm out in the sunshine. The spot I find at the far end of the parking lot because it means I am capable of walking. My huge heating bills because it means I am warm. All the complaining that I hear about our government because it means we all have freedom of speech. The lady behind me at church who sings because it means I can hear. The alarm that goes off in the early morning hours because it means I'm alive. The piles of laundry and ironing because it means my loved ones are nearby. The weariness and the aching muscles at the end of my day, because it means I have been productive. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So, so a few months back, our boys were, we were watching a movie called Do You Believe? And it's a very, I don't know. What do you think, Aiden? Big eye-opener movie, huh? <laughs> so in the first part of it, there was a preacher that, well, I would say it was a preacher. It was a man of a church. He was dragging down a cross on the street, and a, one of the preachers pulled up on, the, up on a curb. And he rolled down his window, and the guy asked him, do you believe? And he said, yes. And he said, no, do you believe? And he said, I'm a preacher. So yeah, I believe. So I guess the pre it got the preacher thinking. So the next Sunday at church, he had a big cross on the stage, and he had where the blood stains would be on that cross. So he gave his church a, I don't know what you want to call it, just a calling or whatever, and he handed out crosses to each one of the members of the church. So we watched it, and then throughout the movie, people gave their crosses to someone in need. The preacher didn't tell them that. They just, if they knew that this person needed, they would slip it in their pocket. They would throw it in their hand without them knowing. So me and Aiden were talking one day, and he said, wouldn't that be nice to charge our church and give them a cross for their pocket? And the boys, you know. We, I, like I said, I think the boys are teaching me and Beth more than what we're teaching them. And some Sundays I go home and I'm like, I don't know if these boys got anything out of our lesson. But they have truly shined, and w just watching them grow, and Jerry probably can contest when he is in class with them, I learn more from these boys than, they, than I probably teach them. So, But this cross that we got is made of authentic materials from the Holy Land and is manufactured by Christian families in the nativity town of Bethlehem. So I thought that was kind of neat. And this is what the, the um, preacher in the church um, that Sunday, he said, the cross is about forgiveness and redemption. You are encouraged to take up your cross as a reminder of the amazing gift that Christ has given us. It is not just a symbol. It is not just an idea. It is the way, the truth, and if you believe it is the truth, let your light shine, take up your cross, and show it. And that's pretty much what we have gotten out of the lesson um, that we did when we watched this movie. So the boys have... Eat one for each of you. We ask that you keep it in your pocket, your purse, your desk, whatever you think. If you feel the need to send it off to someone else, go ahead. If there is extras, we'll put them back there. Um, if you want to take extras to someone that you may need it or if you just want to have extras, that's fine. 
if we run out and you see a need that we need some more, please let one of me, my mom, or Beth know, and we will get some more ordered and get the thing in, in it. So have a blessed week. And as Bethany shared the word boys, it's, that's a compliment to a young man. So I thank these, both these young men and, uh, and the ones who are training up a child in the way he should go. So as they pass out the reminders of the cross. We are also reminded that Jesus so many times reminded us to pray. And if it was ever a, a greater reminder to pray, it is when one is suffering from within or without. Many times what we've had heals, but it leaves scars as reminders. And I pray that as we look at the scars and remember the upper room when Jesus says, peace I give unto you. You know what the next thing he did? He showed him his hands and his side, according to scripture. So he said, there is the peace, not as the world gives, but as I give. We have praises this morning you just want to bring before our Heavenly Father before we go to him in prayer. Yes, sister. Julian, I'd like to add Fletcher, Faze, and Baker to our prayer list. A lot of people already know it's the little girl who was born um, with the, with a tumor on her on her brain. Um, they did expect her to live for two weeks, and it's um, she's lived now for several months. She's been to John Hopkins, and now they've taken her to St. Jude. St. Jude has put a shunt in and took some fluid off her brain, and they actually think they may be able to help Fletcher. That's awesome. So if we could just lift their family, Stevie, Billy, and Fletcher up, please. Thanks. Yeah, if you go through Oakland, uh, anywhere, well, the Garrett County area, I see a lot of McGrath stuff. I see the little pink uh, flags or, or the, the, the pink roses or whatever. That, that's for this child, how the, the county, and, and especially the Oakland area, uh, lives has brought this attention to everyone. Yes, yeah. Beth. Um, my friend Chad that we prayed for last week, he, they were able to identify the bacteria that was um, making him very, very sick in his blood and they are, he is home and doing well, but they, he's still continuing a lot to continue keeping me in prayer. Another boy that I work with, his name's Nick Lawson, lost his dad at, his dad was 67 yesterday unexpectedly yesterday morning. Um, don't know any details, but just keep their, their family in your prayers. Yes. Uh, continue to keep uh, Karen and Ray in your prayers. Uh, uh, Ray's doing pretty good. He has uh, he got the stents in, and he's doing pretty well. He's missing his chemo radiation. Karen is on the ventilator since Tuesday, and uh, she's 100% on the ventilator, and uh, they diagnosed her with RSV, and uh, they're going to try to wean her a little bit off the panel later, but. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Yes, Brian. Um, please continue your prayers for Kathy and I for forgiveness, redemption, and reconciliation in our marriage, please. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thank yes, Sissy. I just have a phrase. Last weekend, I got to spend the weekend with the uh, Southern Garrett Marching Band, and they did win the ACC State Champions. Um, so it was just nice. Um, being with them and supporting them as a teacher um, and in a, as an administrator. So it was a good weekend. All right, thanks, sis. Yes, Sister Kathy. Um, got a really, really good report from my brother in law, James. He is cancer free. Amen, thank you. He has to continue with radiation and do all the follow ups stuff, right. but they could not find any cancer. That's awesome. Mr. Julia, I think, yeah. Just want to thank everyone for their prayers for surgery. Surgery went well and recovery is going very well. Yes, brother, uncle. My uh, sister and I have a cousin, Roy Allen Boyer, who lives down in Martinsburg. He's not been well, and his wife has been his caregiver. She passed away this past week. 
We will. This wife's name was Martha. Martha? <coughs> okay. Kathy said to say hey everybody. She All right. She has been here for a while. And hopefully, continued prayers for Jane. Thank you for that. But uh, maybe, maybe she'll be in for us soon. Thank you. And uh, remember the sister, I lost a sister. The fact that she passed away last Sunday, uh, which is good. Uh, you know, she uh, she knew the Lord uh, from within her heart, and uh, but just uh, the uh, age and you know other complication, and the Lord called her home last last Sunday about this time. Unspoken requests, unspoken praises. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, Lord, this morning as the earth around us was uh, was quiet, it was as if that song of silent night had quieted the rustles within nature. Lord, I just pray this morning for each one of us in this dwelling place that the quietness, Lord, and the peace is not because of nature, not because of the freshness of the season, but it's through your word and through your son Jesus that as a body and as individuals can quiet our hearts Lord and truly and so wonderfully made rest in you Lord you've heard the praises of a little creation Lord of a tiny little girl named Fletcher It's wonderful that the community's behind, Lord. But Lord, when Jesus the Christ looks down, sees a child hurting, he may lifts it up. May we, Lord, truly pray for this family. We're so spoiled, Lord, that so many times. I overlook the hurt in someone else's heart. So thank you, Lord, for reminding us this morning of the need to pray. Thank you for celebrations of children as they do what they've been called as sissy. Shared as she made a journey just to a nearby community. We celebrate you more than we celebrate the things around us. Each hand that was lifted up for an individual and his brother, as God has lifted up his family and others lifted up their family. We 
Brian lifted up his family. And as we're under attack, Lord, but we are a body and we are a nation and we are a church. Let us not stand alone, Lord. So thank you for that truly great reminder of Jesus as he stood alone one day, but he said, I'm not alone. For my Father is with me. And our truly thanks, Lord, for the quietness of the hour, the melody of the music, but more so, Lord, the resurrection of the Christ. So thank you, Lord. May each one of us this morning, Lord, just be indwelled with that spirit of a living God and worship service, Lord. May it be unto thee, Lord, and solely unto you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to give the offertorial thought this morning. Um, I always um, feel that sometimes social media is good but sometimes it's it can be bad or just sad or whatever but this week I was looking through Facebook and <clears throat> this meme came up and it was basically a rock and a, a sucker and it said that tonight I gave each of our girls a rock and a sucker I had them walk down the road and back with the rock in their shoe and the sucker in their mouth you should have heard the grumbling they couldn't walk normal because the rock was uncomfortable they were limping and staggering just trying to get back to me we then came back inside and asked them what it was like for them to walk around like that. The answer varied, but most talk about how hard it was to walk around with the rock in their shoe. Nobody mentioned how sweet the sucker was in their mouth. And it come to say, we often fall to realize God's blessings because we put too much focus on the struggles of life. And I thought with it being close to Thanksgiving, that that was a good thing to, to ponder on this week is we often you know, fail to realize the blessings that God give us and because we think about all the struggles in our life. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Amen. Ushers, come forward. Good morning offering. Let us stand together. Our Father in heaven, thank you for reminding us, Lord, the glorious blessing that you bestow upon us. May we now, Lord, likewise bestow upon you the gifts which you have given unto us and share back into the Creator. 
Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
as we take out our Bibles, and Sister Kathy has so wonderfully said she would read the Scripture for us, but I need to give you just a little bit of background. I make the terrible mistake of assuming everyone's on the same page all the time. And I do that. My granddaughter's working for me now, and I've been at this 50 years, and she's been at it two weeks. And every time she does something wrong and I fix it, I go, 50 bucks, baby. I just made this job isn't free. The schooling cost. So I have trained myself that she doesn't know. And it's not because she doesn't want to know. She's just a young, innocent little girl. So I sometimes do that in the ministry. I assume. So this morning, I want to bring us on the same page because this message I have in, enjoyed the Holy Spirit in me putting it together. And if I get a little loud, my cold is taken over. Where are we in time for today's message? We have just came down, we meaning Moses, has just came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments in his hands. And he looks across the valley, and there is God's people and his people having a orgy and worshiping a golden calf, which Aaron has just said, well, I just poured this gold in, and look what came out. A golden calf, and they was there worshiping it. And Moses throwed the tablets down, and they broke to pieces. And then he went over, and he took the golden calf, and he crushed it, and he ground it, and he put it in their water. He said, you want to worship this calf? Here, drink it. And he made the children of Israel drink the golden calf. And then he says to the Lord, starting with verse 33, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Leave this place. That's where they was worshiping that golden calf. You and the people you brought up out of Egypt. Notice the Lord's little sarcasm here too. Go up to the land I promised on an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants, and I'll... But here's where he says, And I'll send an angel before you to drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Prezatites, the Hivites, the Jezbedites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I'm not going with you. Because if I go, I will destroy these stiff-necked people along the way. And then Moses goes into the tent and praise and when he comes out sister then Moses said to him if your presence does not go with us do not send us up from here how will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us what will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth and the Lord said to Moses I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock, and I will cover cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand, and you will see my face, but my face you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Let us pray. 
Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your teachings of your word. But, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that speaks to the chapel of our hearts and the chapel of our souls. So, Lord, may each heart and the sound of my voice be tender this morning, Lord, as a little child looks to its mother. And, Lord, may your teachings and your word be passed through my weakness and bring forth your mighty strength. In Christ's holy name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pat. Well, this message started more so than just through Thanksgiving, but it started this summer sometime from a dear friend of mine who loves to go to the beach and she came back from the beach, and I thought of Nancy, and I know that she loves the beach, and there's nothing the matter with that. But as she began to show me pictures of the beach, and then she began to tell me a story about the title of the message. In fact, that's where it came from, Riptide. And we are living as a nation, we are living as a denomination we are living as body, we are living as marriages, we are living as individuals on our jobs and our children from the oldest to the youngest. There is a riptide among us. As my friend shared the story of she just loves the beach and she was one day, she said, I think I'm just going to go out and float. And she said, as I was out, from shore just a little ways and and I began to float and just to remind them how wonderful it was here she said the first thing I knew I was being carried away from the beach and she said I knew a couple things first of all I knew not to panic that didn't work and I knew to swim with the shoreline. That didn't work. Because I wanted back to shore at all cost. So she began to scream and she said a dear friend that was with me recognized that and, and said she came out and she said she knew the beach. And she knew that out a certain distance from the beach there was a little piece of ground underneath where they could stand. And she said, as we stood there and screamed and hollered, and finally the lifeguards came and rescued us both. Each and every one of us is living in a riptide. What we see on the surface and what we see underneath is pulling at two different angles and directions. In fact, as Sissy and I put the bulletin together, we couldn't find riptide in the Webster's Dictionary. But I did find a word that describes it. And I made a copy of it so I didn't have to bring a Bible. It's called undertow. And as I read the description of undertow, I was like Elizabeth when Mary came unto her when Mary was pregnant and she opened the door and said and the baby leaped in my womb. Webster's definition of riptide or undertow. Listen to what it says. It says a current beneath the surface moving in a different direction from the surface current backwash, and numerous other compounds, and here's where mine leaped, which need no explanation. Wow. And as I read the words, the dictionary told me, I don't need any other explanation. If you get caught in a riptide, I don't think you're going to be looking up Webster's to see what it is. It needs no further explanation. Every one of us, myself included, is caught today 
in a reversed riptide. Even in our generation, sin used to be under the surface. They called it in the closet. Today, the riptide has reversed. Sin is all around us on the surface, bragging and lifting up and waving. And the Word of God is that still, small voice underneath, pulling us in another direction. It needs no explanation. How many times have I heard as a believer and, and even as a pastor, well, can you show me or prove to me the Word of God? Man, have I got an answer now. I sure can. It's called undertow. Get your dictionary, not the Bible, and read it. It'll say, it needs no explanation. It is the Word. doesn't mean you have to like it. It doesn't mean you don't even have to believe it. It means God's word says, I will have, as Kathy read for us so wonderfully, compassion on whom I want to have compassion on. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now, you're a little bit rough there, Pastor. I think that's being gentle before you stand before a living God and your name's not written in the Lamb's book of life. You you don't need an explanation there. Most of us, if not all of us, love to read the stories. You hear the stories of sermons about heroes. Mitchell Anthony, which is an author from York, Pennsylvania, wrote a book called A Call to Courage. And I I just finished it up, and as I was reading it, and it was a, I wanted to give, him a, give you a couple of his quotes directly from the book. But don't we just love heroes? Remember the little, when cartoons was really cartoons, when you could leave your grandkid and go to the kitchen without wondering what kind of stupid stuff they're going to put in his head. The little cartoon called Underdog. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Don't we just love stories of Samson? Taking the gates off the city and what he carried him 12 miles away and throwed him in a valley. Or Gideon with his 300 against thousands upon thousands. Or Ruth. What child doesn't like David and Goliath? Elijah, which I just spoke on last week, or Nehemiah building the wall, and I could go on and on. Esther with, if I perish, I perish. And probably one of the most famous ones is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Undertow. Doesn't need an explanation. What about today when we're told to just pastor, preach on anything you want? But there's a few things I don't want you to go there. We must obey God rather than men. And they took a beating for that. But as they took their beating... And they started back with the other, and they said, wow. Don't you feel great for getting a beating for the Lord? Wasn't that awesome when the Holy Spirit spoke within me? Christian loved the stories because it's the center of who we are. When we tell these stories to our children or even to our children, we're sharing part of that glorious past of when God's word was on the top and sin was the undertow. 
But something happened over these centuries and years. The words and the deeds. Today doesn't match the characters. The church at large doesn't match the original church. No matter what Bible translation you read from, and I've been belittled enough times that I don't even have to go there. I shared the story. I was at a revival one day, and it was my little red Bible. It wasn't this one. He said, hey, pastor, would you like to read them? Just like Kathy, just at the spare of the moment. Do you want to read scripture? I said, sure, I'd be happy to. Went up and he gave me the trans, opened it up, and oh, NIV. Nah, you got to read out of this Bible. I said, no, I don't. I went back and sat down. Hurt my feelings? Nope. What a. I told you the greatest pat on the back I ever got. Someone says, I'm never coming to Salem ever again. All right, needs no explanation. When the Holy Spirit grabs a hold of you, that's an undertow. The question is, is our words and deeds going in the same direction? It's almost sometimes as if we're reading a fictional Bible. It says what? It says God will have compassion on who he'll have compassion. It says what? I loved Esau, Uncle Junior. But Jacob I hated. Let me clarify that one. He's not talking about Esau and Jacob. He's talking about Israel, the nation. An Edomite, the nation. He said, I hate any nation that builds an idol and worships it instead of me. He wasn't talking about the man. Needs no further explanation. God said, I will do what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do. Many of us, as we hear the story of a youth, but then something happens. In the life of God's people. Something happens from the time when you're in Bible school. And the teacher's reading you about David and Goliath. About Samson and Job and on and on and on. You know what happens? We grow up and we get in that undertow. And it begins to swirl us and it knocks us off our feet. And we begin to worship. The creation. Instead of the creator. We began to say. Oh but that's the wrong translation. It really doesn't mean that. It needs no explanation. It was born in your heart. For the one who says. I don't know is a liar. Within himself. When we hear these stories. Again as adults. They're reduced to mere principle. Yeah, but that was back then. And we began to take the Bible and we edited it and we suit it to our everyday life. And the riptide is pulling us under. Lessons reduced to principles is not a lesson at all. The Bible isn't about men. It's about God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Paul said, most miserable man that I am. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, We, Lord, 
stop this morning the nonsense and seek forgiveness. We admit, Lord, that the riptide of, has won some battles. Oh, we're not saying we're not saved, Lord. We're not saying our name's not in the book. We're saying, Lord, we need to get serious about following you. And may that tide that is pulling in another direction we can't hold to it, Lord. So, Lord, move in a marvelous way in this body of believers. That we can be that person that holds the other from the tide pulling us in the wrong direction. For, Lord, without you, the tide will win. But with you, Lord, it's not even a battle. We're just spectators watching you, the God of heaven, carry us through. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And as Sister Julie comes, brings to us our closing hymn. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. And now, as our young acolytes come forward, 
I pray that the battle that is raging within each and every one, I, as Sister Nancy read, to give thanks. Give thanks for the battle. Let us pray. And now our Father, and to the Most High God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God whose only begotten Son is Jesus the Christ, our risen Savior. Watch over thee and me till we meet again. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Bless you all.